Welcome everybody, today we're gonna work a little bit on the back end and primarily we are going to take a look at video editing, right? So let's say somebody uploads a high definition video that they didn't, you know, edit themselves in terms of like downscaling the size of it, right? We don't need full HD, 4K, ultrasonic, uh, mega thousand pixels per second kind of thing, right? We just want, we, you, you saw the width of our video player, it's like 500 pixels, um, let's handle it, right? Uh, a file is gonna be uploaded, we wanna transcode it, and uh, basically transcoding is changing the size of the video or changing something about the video, right? I'm not too big on video editing, I sort of know the basics, and for me, that's enough to get around, right? Uh, if I require, if I would require to do something more complicated with videos, uh, I would go research on the topic, right? There is an abundance of information out there. So in my tech overview episodes and introductions, uh, I don't know if I talked, I can't remember if I talked about the, this library that is essentially a C-sharp wrapper around FFmpeg, okay? It's called uh, xxabe, xabe.ffmpeg, all right? And I'm gonna leave a link that, for that in the description. You can use that if you'd like. What we're gonna do in this video is we're just gonna go over FFmpeg and again, it's just gonna be a really basic look and real basic usage because at the moment, we don't need anything too complicated. We just need the basics and that if we do need, if we are in a scenario where we need to use that library uh, for more complicated reasons or whatever, uh, we will do that. But let's go ahead and uh, we will go to the internet first right and we're gonna search for ffmpeg right uh here we are on the website if you're on a different um operating system you might want to basically download ffmpeg so you can run it on your somewhere on your machine right so we don't want the source code we want to go somewhere here and maybe click on windows built by zarine yeah uh give me give me the last one and yeah, that looks good. Let's download and download build. Uh, as that downloads, uh, we're gonna go ahead, open it up, and uh, here we have FFmpeg. Uh, never purchase uh, the WinRAR, otherwise you got the eyes of the demo gods on you. They're like, oh, this guy's a good person. I'm like, you know, don't, don't, just don't, you don't, it's bad juju. You don't want that. So here's FFmpeg. What I'm going to do is, what I have is a workspace uh, folder on my D drive and here I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let's say not open a new window but I will create a new folder and I'll just call it ffmpeg right uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab grab ffmpeg and put it in there right awesome cool so close that that's all I needed uh, ffmpeg exe right what, what more could you ask for uh, next thing that we can do is we can open the command prompt, uh, just go to the D drive here, and then we can CD into this folder, and ffmpeg.exe, it's a command line tool, .NET command line tool. If you know anything about command line tools, um, didn't want to open that. If you go to your system environment variables, the only reason that I don't need to type in .NET.exe is because in my paths variables right here, and this is very similar to how Linux works, and once we get it to deploying our application, again, this is something that we're gonna use because we were, we are working on Windows or you're working on some, maybe on Mac, and then we're gonna be deploying to Windows, right? So what we have in here is we just have a path to, a, if I can find it, .NET somewhere here, yes, yeah, C, C, uh, C program files .NET, right? So if we copy that, I don't know if I've already explained this. Uh, let me go ahead, open a different explorer window. Here is the .NET.exe, right? So if we want to run uh, ffmpeg uh, like this, um, uh, let me just exit it. ffmpeg. Yeah, you see, it's not recognized. So if we want to run it from anywhere, um, we add it to the environment variables. And if you create your own program, you build it, you have the executable. Add it to the environment variable, you got your own command line tool. Simple, right? This stuff's not too hard. Um, 
so we want to go back into ffmpeg and here we get the, uh, the command line tool, right? So the first really simple thing that I want to do is I just want to grab one video and convert it to something else. So as you know me, I got a couple of um, video samples. So I, I recommend you pause the video here if you don't have your own video samples. Um, and grab some. So I'm gonna grab a mob file and uh, I don't know any of the mp4s will do really. I'll put them over here so we can play around with them. So if I type dir here you can see that in this directory we have these following files. How does this work? Uh, what will happen is we essentially have the ffmp executable as the input. So we do dash ei input. Uh, we want to input some kind of file. So let's say video 8.mp4. Uh, what do we want to output? Let's say we'll just say test.mp4. Okay. And the ending is important. Okay. So if we will do something like mob or uh, what's it called? Uh, WebM or whatever the format is or, or FLV or AVI. The ending is important because that's when FFmpeg is going to be like, Right, you're trying to change some file format type thing and uh, it's time for me to do my transcoding thing and whatever and uh, don't put some junk in the, at, at the end of it, right? We're sticking to the basics. If you don't know what you're doing here, follow this and just, just chill there, right? Use MP4 because that's an old video format and it's supported everywhere. So we're going to run this. It runs, right? And we get the test.mp4. Awesome. Um, not much has happened. Uh, if we play this test, we still kind of get the video, uh, the what's called the out audio. So what I want to do now is yank the audio out, right? And we're just going to bring up the same command. But before we write test here, we're going to uh, write dash a n. I don't know what it stands for. I typed into Google FFmpeg how to remove audio. Somebody said this is the command. Uh, go for it, right? So here's going to be the override. So you will see this something that I would like to handle as well. It kind of get, gives us a prompt. So we want to be able to get rid of that. And now if we play this, uh, no audio, right? So this is a little bit better in terms of um, that. I, the, the video itself is going to be smaller because there is no audio there. Uh, or I presume it is. I don't actually know for sure, but no audio. I'd assume the video gets smaller. Cool. Uh, now let's get rid of that prompt. So before we, uh, basically it asks us, do you want to recreate it? And here we can just put a, a dash Y flag and that will automatically override the file, right? There's pretty much the uh, options that I want when I'm going to be writing, uh, running this from my program. I don't want it to just abruptly stop. Now what I want to do is essentially say, right, we might have a really big video. I want to downscale it, right? And this is where you just, again, you go to Google and you say FFmpeg, change the size of the video. And again, this is not nothing too complicated. We just go dash VF and we say scale. And you can see it's just a string. There's nothing too complicated about this. And the size that I'm going to go for is 640, uh, 480, right? I think that's an acceptable size. We'll see how it looks like if we need to tweak it a little bit for the format of videos. If God forbid somebody is filming horizontally on their mobile screen, um, I'm not sure how we will handle that. We'll have to see, right? We'll have to test it. So run that. Let's take a look. So we're converting video eight. So we'll take a look at the properties, 670 kilobytes for the test. If we take a look at the properties, 429 kilobytes. All right. and the video is not too much bigger, but that's because it has been already transcoded. Uh, if we take a look at this, for example, three megabytes for the mob video, right? So if we take a look at video error, and again, uh, maybe it will be a little bit easier to grab the commands from on the end here, wherever I ran it. Uh, that was a little bit too far. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to control C. I'm going to press up and down. Uh, I'm going to highlight this bit. Copy that. 
and uh, now I'm gonna make sure once I start typing here and I'm gonna press tab to complete it I can then paste the previous command okay so again uh, now we're just gonna be grabbing a different video but we're gonna be applying the same thing and we're just gonna take a look at how drastic this change can really be so we'll take a look at the test now right uh, from different format to the same kind of thing we have no audio and stuff like that uh, and oh, actually you can see the size here right so we went from four megabytes to 700 kilobytes and uh, let's say uh, our width is never going to be really uh how, how would you say it 640 we might want to go for 540 right uh let's go again and here we're at 500 kilobytes now right and when your screen is going to be around yay big you know uh, and if you're on mobile even smaller i mean this player doesn't go that small but you can see that uh you don't really need humongous resolution uh, for this kind of thing uh, here where we're going to be prioritizing small files for faster video delivery okay now one thing that i want to show you that i kind of prepared here just so you know uh, the power of, FM of ffmpeg uh, here in my bucket i have a video right and it's on the internet right so i just put it in my bucket in Linode and uh, i'm streaming so if we have a video in the bucket I'm going to grab the URL and I'm going to go ahead and open up the command line. And in here, what I will do is I will remove the video error. I'll past paste the URL and let's go ahead and try this, right? It works with the URL as well. So the takeaway here is this is for you to experiment with. Uh, there, are, there are also possibilities of kind of opening, open, opening up pipes. So your ffmpeg becomes kind of like just a bridge right so you can say stuff's going to be coming in here and then just put it uh, put it out somewhere there and it's just like a, a stream in c sharp that you can use to communicate the input and output of your ffmpeg but again uh, th uh that's when you like get into more advanced stuff uh, i've uh, read that it's like uh, some of that stuff is possible i found it really interesting if you want to delve into that that is your own adventure but let's go ahead and take a look at this a little bit closer so wherever it was let me close that um right so video downloaded no audio perfect right downscaled awesome uh now what i'm gonna do is uh, we pretty much got our command and we got our files uh how do we do this from c sharp what i'm gonna do is uh, run this command in particular from c sharp right so let's go ahead. I'm going to open up Linkpad. If you don't have Linkpad, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description. You're not going to get IntelliSense unless uh, you have a license and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to follow this. Uh, this is just purely for demonstration purposes where I'm going to build up the component and then we're going to move it into our application, right? So you don't have to follow this. Uh, if you would like to get Linkpad, this is kind of my development process. If you... if if I'm kind of play, playing around with something, I don't bring it into my application to mess stuff up there. It's a lot faster feedback here. So uh, what we want to do is we want to create a process. We want to launch that executable. So let me close a couple of things here. So you see this as ffmpeg.exe. We want to start it from our c -sharp application. So this is where we have to basically provide the information for where it's located what arguments are we going to run it with etc so what you do is again this stuff is readily available in the internet you basically just google how to run a command line from c sharp uh, i don't do this every day this is literally like the only use case where i have used this uh, there was another one with some other command line tools as well but I already forgot how to do this. So this sort of stuff, it doesn't really stick in your brain, kind of like creating variables. So it's all right, all right to forget it and look it up. So what I'm looking for is a process uh, start info. And this object is really just the information for starting a process, right? Uh, I mean, the, the name is pretty self-explanatory. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to point to, uh, to the process. What process are we starting, right? Um, so let's create a file name. What I will do is I will grab the uh, file location. So this d backslash f whatever. 
uh, let's put a net here so the backslashes don't basically count as escape variables. So once we're here, I'm just gonna copy the name uh, backslash and here I, in the, inside this folder, I want you to grab ffmpeg.exe. Uh, next thing for the arguments, again, let's just go ahead and grab this. Uh, everything that I've written here, it's gonna be the same thing, right? So you can see it's just a string. We can use a string inter interpolation to basically change the scale or the output name, right? Uh, it's not too hard once we port it. So let me just not save that. Uh, and next thing is another good thing to specify is working directory. So kind of where where is all this stuff happening? So I'm just gonna say that this is happening this is still happening in this folder uh, where ffmpeg is located. So let's say that this is going to be test two and it's going to be happening in, in this folder. So we are not specifying a path on the output file here. It's going to be kind of ha happening in this working directory. Another thing you can see that once we run it is the console pops up. So let's just say that we want to create no window and uh, use a shell execute equals false. Right. What are these options? Uh, what these really like, uh, and, and what this one last one, what, what it really entails, I don't really know, but uh, I've never been too bothered to find out. So next thing, what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and start the process, right? So uh, let's get a using a statement in here of our uh, process. Uh, let's create a new process where the start info will be this process start info. And this was probably worth renaming. Put this here. And once we have the process running, uh, well, we don't have it running at first. We want to start. And then uh, once the process is started, we want to wait for exit. OK. And that's pretty much it. So if I run this, we should expect to see test two. So let's see how it takes about one uh, second. So about the same time. Uh, so explorer.explorer, is that a thing? Yep. Uh, okay, well, that doesn't do, let, let's, let's try this again. Dot, okay, nice. Uh, so let's see, test two, right? That's because we specified the working directory and everything worked just fine. And again, uh, if we don't want to specify this, we just need to make sure that we register our FFmpeg as a environment variable on the machine, okay? And that's something that we'll get to once once we get there, right? Now, uh, let's make this run in parallel, right? So one second, uh, our application is gonna be blocking for one second. So we don't want that to happen. So for example, if I have a, a while loop, let's say task equals task.run. Oh, I'm gonna let me import it. All right, so we supply a lambda. Let's grab that bit, put it here. While task is complete, not. Uh, that's when we want to say basically, um, I'll make this async real quick. And uh, we're just storing this task so it's a little bit easier to see in here. And while this task is running, what we can do is just to kind of illustrate the point of uh, the other stuff is happening, right? So 100, uh, let me just say 100 milliseconds here. And we'll say that. 100 ms passed, so we want to dump. I guess I wait on the task in the end. Uh, I don't think that is uh, too important. It's going to be finished here anyway. So let's see how many 100 milliseconds we get printed out while this is running, uh, right? So I get the, forgot this call in there. So you can see a couple. This is like one second is a lot of time of computation. So if you are have if you have a multiprocessor environment or multi-threading, you want to avoid blocking. Uh, stick this in a task, and then something else can be running here, or your application can resume execution. 
and this will run in the background. So uh, let's go ahead, grab this code, and what we will do is we will move this from Linkpad into Writer, and we'll see how it goes, right? So going back to Writer, let me close all the other windows. Uh, I don't think I need the command prompt anymore either. In the video controller where we upload the video, again, we're going to reshuffle this a little bit, but I, I just want to make a point of just making it quickly for now, and then we're going to cl clean clean it up later. So what I will do is in my project here, I'm going to not add it like that, but let's go ahead and add a directory. And we'll call it FFmpeg, right? So uh, what I will also do is I will open it in an Explorer because previously going through this, I had an issue where uh, I couldn't copy stuff. I couldn't copy this FFmpeg file through Writer. So I'm just going to copy the executable like this uh, using Windows. So uh, I'm not sure why it failed before, but this should now put the executable here in this folder. And uh, from here on, uh, we'll close the FFmpeg folders from our Linkpad script. Hopefully this is not too much to copy off screen uh, for you. I'm just going to go ahead, grab this task because we can just simply await on the task here. And after here, we're just going to say await. We're going to import the rest of the stuff. And all this is going to do is basically not block our thread, right? So uh, because we're going to be awaiting on this task here, again, we can put it in a different function and still await it. Uh, the requests that are going to come, in, come into other controllers are not going to block. So a couple of things to replace here. We have access to our environment so we know where stuff is. Uh, let's go ahead and map this out. So. Uh, the file name, uh, so that's our command. I will use path.combined to uh, grab the, or basically create the path. Uh, we will grab the content root path. So that's going to be tricking library.api. So this is the root. The next folder is ffmpeg. And then it's ffmpeg.exe is the executable. Uh, next thing for the working directory, we can, I think we can just go ahead and uh, say web root path, right? So we're saying the www root is where we're going to be working, right? So we only have those two videos in there. And next thing for the input and the output output, again, I'm going to do this as test too. Uh, again, this is just a quick test um, to see if it's going to be working we are going to extract it into a separate service, uh, well, a, a separate class to begin with, and we will see, does this need to be its own application sort of thing if it's putting too much load on this API? But I think that's too early to think about at this point. So video um, input, right? We have uh, the safe path. Let's go ahead and put it here, right? So let's make this formatable, safe path. Right, I don't think we need anything more than that. Uh, file name that we're returning is still going to be from the unconverted one. Uh, again, I'm not worried too much about that. All I want to know is the new file is going to get created. Is test2 going to get created here as well? We'll see. So I've got my .NET Core application running. Got my um, Nuxt application running. Let's go ahead and see this. So create submission. All we're going to do is we're just going to upload a file and see if anything turns up on the back end. So let's go ahead and see it. And here we go, right? So first file is the original file where we have the get random file name and test two is the output process of our uh, file transcoding, right? So this can happen asynchronously. We can put the, we can basically offload this. We don't need to put this here. We can basically put it somewhere else, this task, and return the file, original file name. Meanwhile, we'll transcode it and stuff like that. And once we submit the form, we join up the original name with the transcoded file, right? And But that's just generally the kind of stuff that you can do. Again, as I showed you before, you can download stuff from URLs and... Uh, you can even push to URLs, right? But with S3 bucket, it's not as simple. So again, we're just going to take the mo the simplest approach. If there are any problems, we will then work towards solving those problems. Uh, but for now, this will be it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. 
a really easy way to downscale or edit videos. So if you FFmpeg is a skill on its own. So if you learn FFmpeg, anything you do with FFmpeg, all the video magic stuff, you can do it now in C Sharp as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, any questions, leave them in the comments section. Don't ask me too much about this process start info and process. I never cared to learn about that about it that much. I just Google every time I need to use it, right? And that's been like three times maximum, okay? It's one of those obscure things you rarely need to use. But nevertheless, I also stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. If you're into that sort of thing, come join me. All the updates and information are on my Discord channel as well, so you can go ahead and join that. And hopefully, I'll see you in my other episodes.